Good morning, friends. We are learning our subject that is data mining 3160714. And in that, we are learning our chapter 3 that is concept description and association rule mining. So, yesterday we have seen FP growth or FP tree algorithm, right? Now, let us take one more example of the same, right? So, it will be clear to you, right? Here, we can say transaction ID is given and items body is given. Order frequent items that we will do after finding the support count. So, how we do that? For each and every item, we have returned them here. And we find the support count of them from this transaction table, right? After that, what we need to do is we need to check for the minimum support threshold. Minimum support threshold given is 3. So what we have to do is we have to check whether the count, whatever is given here, is crossing the minimum support or not. Fine. So here many items are there. So for all the items we can say here support count is there. Isn't it? And what do we say? That this L, D, G, H, I, J, W. These are the items which are not crossing the Minimum support count condition, right? So, what do we do? We will remove them from further processing, isn't it? So, now what do we have? F, C, A, B, M, and P, right? All these items are satisfying the condition of minimum support, right? So, let us proceed. So, what is the order of transaction? See, here we have returned that what should be the ordered frequent items according to this, this support count. As we know, Whichever is having the greater support count, that will put here, isn't it? And what do we do? We put them in the sorted order, right? So here we have considered F, C, A, B, M and P, right? From that we have sorted according to their, their support count, fine? Okay, so whatever transactions are given to us, we order them according to their support count fine okay so for the first transaction whatever is that for ordered transaction transaction is what it is we can say f a c d g i m p what we do is we are having f c a m p where has this G gone, I gone, hmm? that we have cut. Why we have cut? Because they are not satisfying the condition of minimum support, right? This is what we haven't considered for the previous one. We have considered, right? Let us see this. So here what do we say? F, C, A, M, P. This is the transaction which is ordered transaction. Whatever was there in the transaction, it is fine. What we have to consider is ordered transaction and that is in the form of the support count which is in descending order. Isn't it? Higher comes first, lower comes next. Okay. So now for this, we can say we'll have to have the root, 
right root node we want to have the fp tree right so for this we can say f comes first what is the count of it that is 1 then c so we'll be giving the count as 1 for a the count is 1 for m also the count is 1 and for p also the count is 1 fine now for the next transaction we can say it is f c a b m it is in ordered transaction right here in this particular table we have put everything here right so we just have to consider this previously what we were doing we were considering this particular transaction and then we were saying that it is this one you can write anyway right but if you have made it this table it makes your life simple isn't it you do not have to check for this transaction you just have to check what is there in ordered frequent items right because that only is required for making the tree right so that only we will take so now what we will do is f f is revisited so count is increased c is also revisited so the count is increased a is also revisited so count is increased now we have b do we have any path here no it was not there so we will create a new branch right recall that in this particular figure it was not there right but now it is added so you can say b1 and m1 fine b1 and m1 okay now next transaction is f and b so let us start from the root f is revisited so increase the count b is not there in the path so we will add it right you can see the previous figure this was f2 and no branch was there for b right this is what we are adding in this step okay so b1 is added now c b p let's see that from root do we have anything where in we are having c node see in the previous so you can have the idea c is there in the starting that is after root no it is not available fine so what we have to do is we have to create a new branch c then b then p for all of them we are initializing the count and that is one fine now we can say check for the items support count from the tree and table right from the tree and table for f it was 4 we have considered right in the first step only we have considered this frequent items and their support count right let me show you that yes here it was isn't it this is for frequent items that's what we have put here so we can see that right okay so it is available here now what what is there for the item support count what do we see for f it is four yes from the tree also we need to verify that we should not miss anything for frequent items right so we have checked f is four now for c c is three oh it is wrong no it is not wrong c3 is here c1 is here so c3 and c1 so what do we say c is 4 right we are verifying whether we have made this tree properly or not whatever frequent items were there whatever were their count are they same here or not fine okay if they are not same we may have missed something fine so this is the way to verify it now a is 3 let us go to this particular branch a is 3 yes 
here is there no it is not there here is there not there here is there not there for each and every branch for full path we check for frequent item right so what do we do is a is 3 yes it is verified what about b it is 3 let's see from this path follow the same thing okay so we will not have any problem take one by one branch and check it out whether the particular item is found or not fine for this particular branch can we find any b no it's not there here it is there yes it is there so b is 1 let us proceed from this branch we can say it is 1 so b is 1 plus 1 is 2 in this particular branch also we are having the b so that is 1 so 1 plus 1 plus 1 and totally is equal to 3 right so we can say the b frequent items count is verified in this tree okay now for m in the table we have counted that as 3 let us check it out for this particular tree let us go to this particular branch m yes m is 2 let us go to other branch here what is m what is m is here it is m1 so 2 plus 1 is 3 in this branch m is not available in this branch also m is not available right so m support count is 3 fine what about p in the table it is 3 let's see for this first branch what it says p is 2 what about this branch p is not available in this branch p is not available in this branch p is having value 1 so 2 plus 1 and that is 3 fine right? so for p we are having the support count that is 3 fine right? and we have verified from the table and tree right now now what do we do create conditional fp tree to mine association rules examples fine so now what we do for this create conditional fp tree create list of paths to reach a particular node right path and the count of reach node right so what do we do reaching p node having two paths say f c a m where is p p is here what do we say is we are having two path that is f c a m and f c a b where it is f c a b right for reaching p node we do have two paths f c a m to reach p and what do we say is f c a b x second we are reaching p okay not m here it is m right so for reaching it we do not have this one we do have f c a b no we are having c b and p right so we are having c and b c and b right we need to reach p node okay not m node so what do we say about that p node is having two paths that means to reach a particular node p we do have two paths one path is this one that is this straight one 
and second one is this one fine now what do we say is for f c a m it is 2 and other path what we have considered is c b c b is having the length that is 1 right is it is it length no what do we say is c b and p so what is p that is 1 right that is 1 so write in the table that f c a m and c b not f c a b it is c b right colon 1 right this way people are writing okay so now what do we do is we have to write this table you got it or not what we want is we need to reach to say particular p okay so what do we do is whatever are the paths that we have seen for say this particular path it is having one length one length no it is not one length it is this particular count right we have seen yesterday also right say if we are considering f c a m then what we need to consider is f c a m whatever is the minimum support count in this particular path for f it is 4 for c it is 3 for a it is 3 and for m it is 2 so whatever is minimum that is 2 right so it is applied to all this nodes for a path okay so what do we say is to reach a particular node p we do have this path that is f c a m and for that we are having 2 as this support count fine and what about the second one that is c b for that what is there it is 1 whatever is minimum that we will be writing right that will be writing in this particular table now for which items will be writing whichever are the frequent items right for them we are writing fine so for f what do we say is what is the pattern do we have anything before this f node we have only root node right so do we have the path like a b c no we do not have right so what do we say is we can say will be writing it as empty because it is having only root node and not the frequent item okay so we'll be putting it as empty and what is the conditional fp tree that is empty fine now what do we do for c what is that how we can reach c node how we can reach c node so for that we can say we are going from root so f4 is there and then after c3 is there right f4 is there and then after c3 is there so to reach c node we are having f4 right we are having f4 isn't it are we having that so we need to write f4 do we do we write it as f4 no we'll consider whatever is the minimum right so we'll be writing it as f3 fine we'll be writing it as f3 fine then what do we say is in the conditional fp3 we write it this way also that is to reach c node right what do we say is f colon 3 then this pipe right and then after c it means that to reach c node we are having this particular path right and what is the support count for that that is equal to 3 fine now fc is 3 f3 c3 2 add a right c f c is return see the way people are writing okay we can write it as f c together and 
where it is fc and 3 let us see to a when we want to reach a what do we say is f4 c3 right the path to reach a node is f4 c3 fine and this is a3 so what is the minimum count that is 3 fine so i can write it as f c 3 or otherwise you can write it as f colon 3 c colon 3 right the way people are writing okay and what that is to reach a particular node that is a fine okay so let us go to the b node how we can do that b node where it is it is here so what do we say about that f c a right f c a and b is one so whatever is minimum that we need to write f c a b f is four c is three a is three and b is one right so this one will be writing here so we can say f c a one then after what do we say is f one f one so what do we say to reach b node we do have f and one you can say f is four why are you taking one see we need to take the minimum of this path that is to reach b right so what do we say is it is one fine so f colon one fine now c colon one is it there where it is yes here it is right so what do we say is we can say f no c and b right c and b that is the path available what is the minimum support count for this particular path it is only one fine it is only one so what we need to write is we are not considering this b because what we are saying that we are reaching this particular node fine so what do we do is we'll write it as b one no the path is here what we write is to reach this particular node what we are writing is c1 right so that's what we have written here now till now what we were writing is f3 that was only we are writing for conditional fp3 for fc3 also we were writing say f colon 3 c colon 3 right why because it was common common no only one path was that so we were writing it other way but 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 now here what is the case that we are having three paths to reach to a particular node so so what to do is if something is common we should take it but 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 do we have anything in common for these three paths <clears throat> no we do not have right we do not have so what do we do is what do we do is we are having fca colon one f colon one you can say f is common but not in all three parts, right? So we'll not consider that. We will say that empty, no common, fine? Same way we'll do that for M and same way we'll do that for P, right? That is, you can say FCAM and CB. That's what we have considered before also, right? This one, this CB, FCAM and CB, right? So that's what we have written below. That is a last line of our table and what do we say is fcam2 and cb1 right so what do we do over there what is common in that what is common in that is c in both the paths what is common is c so we have considered that and taken the summation of both of them that is three so we are having conditional fp3 where we'll be representing it as c colon three to reach a particular node that is p fine for explanation also you can see this particular youtube video also fine okay now we have started with the limitation of a priori algorithm and we said that fp growth algorithm will remove the limitations of the a priori algorithm right but that also is having some disadvantages fine so what are they the biggest problem is the interdependency of the data 
the interdependency problem is that for the parallelization of the algorithm some that still needs to be shared which creates a bottleneck in the shared memory right let us compare a priori algorithm and fp growth algorithm see this question can be asked as have the difference between these two or otherwise or otherwise we can say advantages of a p growth algorithm or otherwise advantages of a priori algorithm in comparison of fp growth that way also it can be seen right so whatever is given the answer will be same that is you will have to give the comparison but 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 you can show the advantages wherever it is there you should mark that this is advantage wherever it is disadvantage you should mark it right so let us see the comparison right a priori algorithm what do we say about that it generate single turns pairs triplets etc for run time what do we see should we see that no let us first check it out the fp group what do we see is insert sorted items by frequency into a pattern tree what do we do what is the technique here we consider say one item set two item set three item set that way we consider fine what do we consider for fp growth we consider insert sorted items by frequency in the pattern tree fine now what do we say about the run time for a priori algorithm we can say candidate generation is extremely slow run time increases exponentially depending on the number of different items what do we say about fp growth algorithm run time increases linearly depending on the number of transactions and items fine this one exponentially increases and this one linearly increases right okay memory usage for that we can say a priori algorithm saves single turns pairs triplets etc what about fp growth it stores a compact version of the database right parallelizability for that what do we say is candidate generation is very parallelizable but 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 what do we say about fp growth algorithm data are very interdependent each node needs the root right now associative classification mining what is that given a label training data set the problem is to derive a set of class association rules from the training data set which satisfy certain user constraints that is support and confidence thresholds so what are the common associative algorithms they are cba that is class based association cpar that is classification based or predictive association rule cmar that is classification based on multiple class association rules mcar that is multi class classification based on association rule right so now what do we want to have is the given a label training data set see whenever we are talking of the classification we should have we 
we we have the labeled data set fine and what is the problem the problem is to derive a set of class association rules okay till now what we were considering is only association rules that is this item and other item and this way right now what we are considering is class association rules and for that we are having this four algorithms right let us see that cba right class based association rule mining algorithm is developed by bing liu right and many others cba operates using a two stage approach to generate a classifier two steps are there okay or two stages are there let's see what are they generating a complete set of classification association rules that is the first stage and second one is prune the set of cars what is cars classification association rules to produce a classifier right first thing is generate complete set of classification association rules and second step is prune the set of cars to produce a classifier right it uses a priori algorithm to generate candidate sets second one algorithm cmar that is classification based on multiple class what do we do for that it uses approaches based on the frequent pattern growth method to discover rules and cba and cmar are time consuming right what do we say is first algorithm cba that is dependent on the a priori algorithm to generate the candidate sets what about cmar multi multi class classification algorithm for that we can say that we are having the fp pattern growth method right so what about the next algorithm that is cpar classification based on predictive association rule for that the cpar and other predictive mining algorithms overcome this problem by generating a small set of predictive rules directly from the data set based on the rule prediction and coverage analysis as opposed to generating candidate rules right so what it is trying to remove the limitation or which problem it is overcoming that is instead of generating candidate rules what it does that is it generates a small set of predictive rules directly from the data set based on rule prediction and coverage analysis fine so it does not generate the candidate rules but it gives the predictive rules fine mcar that is multi class classification based on association rule what is that mcar uses an efficient technique for discovering frequent items and employs a rule ranking method which ensures detailed rules with high confidence are part of the classifier okay now next is the incremental arm incremental association rule mining what is that in incremental association rule mining as the time goes new transactions are added and 
all transactions are being obsolete right what is the speciality of incremental arm that is in that we can say as time goes new transactions are added and old transactions are being obsolete till now what we used to say is data mining typically we are applying to the history of the data old data say past 10 years of data on that we are applying data mining algorithms so typically it does not have anything like current transactions like insert delete update retrieve current transactions that are typically not there still we are seeing that as time goes new transactions are added and old transactions are being obsolete so are we considering the new transactions whatever are every day suppose we are purchasing something from the particular website like uh, amazon or flipkart or anything is it so no it is not that whatever important transactions are there those are being added and whatever old were there that are being obsolete it is nothing like it is having the insert delete update rates similar to that of our currently going transactions see if we consider say amazon or flipkart or anything you can say that on those particular databases or data sets we can say that the insert delete update rate rate of insert delete update is too much say it can be say uh, at least we can say 10000 per day right at least 10000 per day transactions are there insert delete update the things are there fine but 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 for this incremental arm are we considering that rate no it is very much low than that of the current rate right so so what i mean to say is continuous insert delete update insert delete update is not there right yes but as time goes we can say that uh, after say uh, one week or after say one month or after say one year we are inserting new transactions and considering old as obsolete fine so the rate at which we are doing the insert or delete or update is slower in the case of incremental arm right so what are the uh, incremental algorithms they are fup that is fast update fup2 that is also fast update but the version is 2 update with early pruning that is uwep and negative bond right these are the four algorithms they are for the incremental arm which we want to study now in this algorithm what do we say is in this particular concept what do we say is old rule may be dropped out and new rule may arrive in right old rules are dropped out and new rules are arrived in fine right? so what do we say about the fup algorithm that is fast update algorithm what do we say about that that is fast algorithm of incremental association rule mining it works with insertion transaction only it cannot work with deletion transaction so i have given the different color also to show what is there and what is not there fine so it makes your life simple okay so it works with insertion transaction only and it cannot work with the deletion transaction fine it performs 
multiple scanning of database that is it scans incremented database as well as old database it performs similar operation for k item set original database d and its corresponding frequent item sets l r c l1 l2 up to lk the goal is d dash that is d union delta plus and where delta plus is an incremented database fine it only supports insertion and it cannot work with the deletion fine now next is the fast update version 2 what do we say about that it is the extension of the fup algorithm it works with incremented database as well as decremented database the first was only having the insertion operation where is here we can handle the deletion operation also fine so what do we say that it handles the deletion operation fup2 is equivalent to fup for the case of insertion and is however a complementary algorithm of fup for the case of deletion for a general case that transactions are added and deleted algorithm fup2 can work smoothly with both deleted operation that is deleted portion delta minus and the added portion that is delta plus of the whole data set fine now it gives poor result if it is used with temporal database what do we mean by temporal database temporal database stores data relating to time instances it offers temporal data types and stores information relating to past present and future fine now the next algorithm is update with early running what is that it is a subset of fup algorithm what is fup fast update fine right? so in update with early pruning algorithm it prunes the item set in original data set as as soon as it become infrequent in updated database d dash what do we do is in update in update with early pruning algorithm that is this one it prunes the item set in original data set as soon as it become infrequent in updated database d dash see original database is that a uh, new database that is whatever we want to add new transactions are there right if in new transactions database d dash if particular pattern is infrequent then then what do we do is we prunes those item set in the original data set also right okay now it will not wait until all kth iteration is completed so it reduces the candidate set generation in incremented database fine next is negative border algorithm what is that negative border algorithm is used for improving efficiency of fup based algorithm 
given a collection of frequent item sets l negative border bd minus l of l consists of item set r which are not in l what we are saying is negative border that is bd minus l what do we say that l consists of item set uh, for negative border what do we say is l consists of item set r which are not there in l right which are not there in l in other words the negative border consists of all item sets that were candidate sets of the level by method which did not have enough support right negative border consist of all the item sets that were candidates of the level wise method which did not have the enough support right we can say that um, infrequent items right infrequent items this algorithm for scans incremented part of the database and then whole database is scan if and only if item set outside of negative border gets added to frequent items what do we mean to say this that is this algorithm what it does scans incremented part of database yes it is that and then whole database is scan when when whole database is scan only if and only if outside of the negative border gets added to frequent item set right new item is coming right which is frequent that is new frequent item is a for that can say that will scan the original whole database otherwise we scan only the incremented database right this may result into increasing size of candidate set generation so next is what we want to study is mining multiple level association rules see multiple classes we have seen right say for bread butter is a food item for you can say diamond you can say rarely sold items right for all of them we have considered different different what support count right that was there here what we are considering the multiple level that was for multiple class right for multiple class now what we are learning is multiple level association rules what it says items often form hierarchies flexible support settings items at the lower level are expected to have lower support what do we say for example we do have the milk here we do have the level hierarchy is given to us wherein we say that milk and what is at the next level that is that is you can say milk special type of milk and second is the skim milk what do we say is 2% milk and skim milk that is the special type of milk is 2% milk and skim milk right now for that what do we say or what this algorithm this concept say is level wise support is to be defined for upper level the support is more and for lower level the support is less right that's what is given here now the minimum support that is also different what do we say about that when we are having uniform support it is not always the case that we are having the 
same support or you reduce support what is the case that it can have if it is having the minimum support uniform then we can see that at level 1 also 5 percentage at level 2 also 5 percentage right but 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 that is actually flexible but but items at the lower level are expected to have lower support right so this can be there it is not compulsory that at one level it is having say 5 percentage so at uh, level 2 we should have the 3 percentage only but 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 are expected to have the lower support right so it does have the reduced support that is at level 1 if it is having 5 percentage then at level 2 we are expecting to have the lower support and that is 3 percentage right exploration of shared multi level mining that was given by agrawal and shrikant right that's all for today we'll see this tomorrow